I want to welcome you into my vlog today. Now, this vlog is a little bit different because up to this, my vlogs have been quite in depth and they're usually aimed at knitters that are well down the knitting journey. But I thought it was probably time to have a vlog that addresses or talks to people who are just starting out on the journey. Now, that might be you starting out on the journey and you've just landed in here and you're like, oh yeah, I want to know more about knitting. Or you might perhaps be one of my regular vlog viewers and you're like, I know how to knit. Why are you doing one for beginners? And the reason is, I suppose, tied with what I get questions asked about all the time, I'm always asked by beginners to help them, to give them a hand on getting started and it is surprisingly difficult. It often takes me by surprise how difficult it is to help somebody move on the path towards knitting. Because there's so many layers involved. There is, first of all, figuring out why do they want to start knitting? Because the reasons for starting knitting is actually going to influence to a certain extent how you're going to teach them. Because if someone just really wants a finished project very quickly, then maybe you'll do the cast on for them and they kind of take off from that point. But if they're much more interested perhaps in um, kind of having something that gets the mental gears going and something a bit thinky, then they may be really into all of the different techniques and learning more about each stage of it, why you do it and all of the whys of knitting. So the, the purpose for someone to learn to knit is actually going to be really, really different. Um, and we encounter it a little bit more as well since we've had an in-person shop because that's a new thing for us. Up to this point, I was either all online or I was knitting in um, classes that would be aimed towards experienced knitters on fiber feshes, fiber tours, things like that. So when you then have to start thinking about what it's like to go back to learning how to knit, you approach it from a really different perspective. So like my own story in terms of knitting, when I started off, first of all, I learned when I was really young. I was about six, seven, I suppose. So in school, we would have been taught how to knit, how to purl, and then just set on our way and quite happily knit of things. Usually at that age, it just meant that you made it up as you went along. I wanted a jumper sweater for one of my dolls. I'd knit two squares and you'd sew them together. I did the same thing for myself at the age of about 10 or 11. Big garter striped squares from side to side, sew them together, I had a vest. So the, the mechanics of it and coming out at the other end with something that I could use was what was most important to me at that stage. But it was totally different when I turned around and I came back as an adult knitter. And at that point, I was, I was kind of sitting back and going, I'd really love to knit again because my oldest, who had, was about 16 months old when we left Florida, had no need for anything warm. And when we came to Ireland, he was always cold. So at that point, I started actually saying, ha, huh, could really use how to learn how to knit so that I have something that he can wear and that is going to be warm and comfortable. So what I ended up doing at that point was got a Baby Knits for Beginners book and I worked my way through all the techniques. Now, the actual mechanics of it is most definitely like riding a bike. They're picking up the needles from when I had been, you know, 20, 30 years before that. And the mechanics of it, I completely remembered. What I didn't have a clue about, though, was how to read a pattern and how to even do anything like cast on, how to fix stitches, all of those things. So where you are coming from is going to be very dependent on yeah what you want to get out of it. For me, I'm like, I want to get those finish knits for the baby, send me on my way. So that was where I wanted to, to kind of get started with it. So if you're coming in and there's something very specific you want, um, I might actually just give you a few quick links so that you're able to jump in fairly quickly before we go too much further on. I will be going into a bit more in depth and other stuff in this video but I can give you links to go even further, um, whether you're a more advanced knitter or whether you're a new knitter. So the first one is, if you just want to learn a specific technique, if you already know the basics of knitting, all that stuff, but you need to know new techniques, on my website, Stolen Stitches, you can here find the link into just the tutorial section 
find the relevant area and jump straight into where you want to be. So that's the first one, just very specifically techniques. Next one is if you are a total beginner and you actually don't even know what knit is, what's a knit stitch, what's a pearl, what's a cast on, what you're gonna want is jump into stone stitches again and go to knit basics and under there, We've got some articles and some just basic information leading you through some of the first few steps. So those are the first two ones and they're both free and you can immediately jump into those. If you want to deep dive a bit more, then one of my paid tutorials or master classes is probably going to be helpful. We've got um, zero to knit is going to have everything all the way from, you know, what the different yarns are, what different needle types are, working through to knitting a basic garter square into a hat and then finally into a cardigan. Or there's Knit Basics, which is going to have just the first couple of ones where you'll do the basic swatch and move into a hat. So you can kind of take your pick there if you want to have something where the very slow paced step by step dire directions that you can watch over and over again. So that's, you can all find them on all of the links that we've given here. So that's if you want to kind of, if you've got something very specific. If you would like a more general overview and a bit of an idea about what knitting is about and what you should be looking for, then keep watching. So what we're gonna start with, like we began with first of all is um, taking a look at the most basic things you need to get started. So first thing is you need some yarn and you're going to need some needles. Now as you see there's a few variations in each of these so I'm going to just explain some of the starting ones first of all. This one here is a, a ball of yarn where when you get it like this from the shop you'll just take the end of this and you can start knitting with that. You don't have to do anything else with this. When you get yarn like this, this is um, a skein or sometimes a hank and it's twisted up. Now it looks really interesting, but you can't knit with it like this. There is purpose to the madness. The reason they have it done like this is the yarns are not under tension. You see the yarns are just, they're very gently twisted and it allows the fibers to relax. So if you've got this sitting on a shelf in a shop or on a shelf in your house, whichever place it may be, it doesn't matter. It's going to be just as good when you pull it out after a couple of years as it was when it was put on that shelf. If it's been wound into something a bit tighter, into a ball or a hank, you'll have a certain amount of tension on that yarn. And what that's gonna mean is that the tension is going to reduce the elasticity of the yarn in it. So if you're not, when people aren't using them in a while, this is the best way of, of uh, holding it together, uh, putting it on the shelf. Um, the one thing I will say is though that if you're new, you probably want to go get started with this first of all. So there's one less step to begin with, or alternatively in a yarn shop, you can also go in and say, could you wind that into a cake for me? So if there's something you like like this, then you can just go ask it to be put into a, into a cake. They've got, you've got what's called a swift and a ball winder, and they can do it fairly quickly for you. You won't be able to return it probably if that's happened, but the likelihood is if you're planning on knitting with it straight away, that's not gonna be a problem. It's more likely to be kind of higher quality, more expensive yarns if you do get it like this. Now, if you get a gift maybe of this or you pick one up and you didn't ask to have it wound up, what you can do yourself as well is just pull it out like this and you see this is what you've got. Then you just undo the knots and you can either put this over a chair or over something and then just wind it into a little ball for yourself. And that's gonna work just fine. It's not really, it's not a problem. It's just going to be, um, it's just gonna take a little bit longer because it won't be ready to use straight out of the ball. Now that's, I suppose the first thing is how they come. And then the other thing you want to look at is the kind of fibers. Um, this here is cotton. Cotton is really good for, I think, baby wear, for summery wear, things that are lighter. Yeah, I mean, think about what you like to wear cotton for. But the actual fiber itself is inelastic. See, there's not much bounce to that. And what that actually means is when you're knitting with it, it's a little unforgiving. So the, um, the stitches are going to be a bit stiff or harder in your hands to work. And also they won't bounce back, so any uneven, unevenness in your stitches is going to be a lot more obvious. So to get started, I would avoid starting with cotton. 
um, what people often start with, particularly if, if you don't want to worry about wasting money and you just want to learn to knit and, if, and have plenty of yarn to work with, often starting off people will get started with acrylics and things like that because it does tend to be a bit cheaper and then as you get more comfortable in your knitting and you know that you're going to make most use out of the yarn you might perhaps start moving on to um, more wools or wool blends with other things that have kind of just a more luxurious fabric it is it's a whole thing by itself a separate from knitting a lot of people really enjoy collecting yarns, interesting yarns, um, hand dyed yarns, which are another step above again in terms of cost. So it's kind of a bit of a mild minefield going down to figuring out what yarn to knit with. But start with, find something with a bit of bounce that's in your price range that you feel comfortable spending and that it feels comfortable to work with. So that's the how they come the different fibers and price. And the only other thing I haven't talked to you about is the weight. Because when you pick the yarn up, you can see there's different thicknesses. This one is a fairly skinny one. It's like it's called a sports weight. And this one over here is on the opposite end of the spectrum. That is a super chunky yarn. So they come all the way from a very light four plier fingering up to this one here is sports weight. The next step up is double knitting, otherwise known as DK. Then you move into worsted and aran, which would be, this is like an aran weight here, and then super chunky that we had there. So that's kind of broad strokes, the kind of steps along. The thicker the yarn, the fatter the stitches. So it means that you can knit a bigger piece with less stitches. It is a little stiffer to work because the stitches, when you move them around, when they're on chunky yarn, are a little slower to move across the needle, but they're easier to see. So slightly bigger yarns can be quite helpful when you're, you're learning because you can see the stitches easily, you know what you're doing basically. So um, yeah, that's probably, I would be inclined towards the heavier weight yarns or the fatter yarns. Tied with the yarn weight, the needle size you're going to want to use will correspond with the yarn weight. So if you've got a finer yarn, you're going to want a smaller diameter needle because you want the stitches smaller. Because if you have big stitches but skinny yarn, you're going to have very loose stitches. If you've got fat yarn and a really tiny needle, you're, it's going to be really tight and it's just it's not going to be very stiff and there'll be no flexibility to the fabric. So usually on a ball band, you're going to have the actual needle size matched up with the yarn or suggestions. They'll usually have a range depending on how tight a knitter you are because that's another whole thing. You may be a tight knitter, a loose knitter. You don't know until you start knitting. So that's kind of, it'll depend on how, how tight you hold your yarn, how tight you hold your needles, things like that. But that's something that changes as you knit as well. And starting off, you just take bang in the middle of the recommended. You do a little square and it'll tell you where to go from there. So that's kind of how you figure out where the needle sizes are. Go from what's on the ball band or on the pattern to get started. Kinds of needles. These ones are straight needles. When I started knitting, these were the only things that existed. I thought this was all there was to knit on. When you're doing straight needles, obviously that means you're gonna go back and forth in rows. It'll be flat knitting, not in the round, but these are something that I discovered over the last several years when I picked up knitting as an adult, circular needles, where you've got two tips here, which are a few inches long, and then you've got a flexible cord across the other side. These little babies are really, really versatile because you can knit in almost any way with these needles. Obviously, because it's a circle, you can join it in the round. You can do something that goes all the way around and you just, knit round and round and round in a tube or alternatively you can actually knit back and forth with these so you'll knit one side turn around and knit the other side and as you're knitting on the tips the rest of the knitting just sits quite happily over here on the cord the reason i like these is because of the fact that if you're knitting bigger pieces it puts much less strain on your body because when I was when I came back to knitting and I was knitting something on these and as a lot of people do when they come back to knitting they knit way too much so I was knitting way too much using my straight needles and I was getting really bad pain in my upper back and I was kind of getting quite upset about it because I didn't want to stop knitting I love knitting so I kind of started experimenting and I picked up my circular needles 
and knit the same piece on the circular needles, but just doing a flat back and forth in rows. And the pain went away and I was kind of looking at it, that doesn't make any sense. But as I started thinking about it, I realized what was happening is, as I was knitting on the needles, all of the weight of the fabric was sitting on my lap. So I wasn't taking any of the tension in my shoulders. So I would definitely encourage you to give circular needles a go, even if they seem a little intimidating, there's actually quite a lot of advantages to them. So those are the two most basic kinds. Something else you might have encountered is called double pointed needles, which are a little bit like this, but they're shorter. The other point will have a point and they come in sets of four or five. And what you're doing with those is you can use them instead of a circular needle to do a circle. So if you had a circle like this, you can see if this could be one needle, one needle, one needle, and one needle. So you're approximating a circle with those four. So the fifth one you'd knit across here, knit across here, across here, and across here. So you kind of, it, it approximates a circle basically is what you're doing with double pointed needles. I've never been a huge fan of them, but if you don't like circular needles, especially for small circles, then it's worth giving them a shot because I'm there is a tool for every knitter out there just because I have preferences or there's things I prefer does not necessarily mean that that's going to be the case for you so take what I say just as one opinion just as a starting place and then experiment and figure out what works for you really that's my that's my knitting mantra really is find what works for you take what people are saying just at face value it may work, it may not work. Just implement what you can use and leave everything else go and keep looking for something that is going to work for you. So once you got your tools, you got yourself all set up, the next thing is to figure out what your first project's going to be. And that can be a little tricky because traditionally a lot of people would start talking about, oh, go knit a scarf because it's just back and forth and you'd learn it. The problem with the scarf is that it's really long and it's really boring. Like if you knit a garter scarf, it goes on and on. And the likelihood is you will have given up from boredom before you ever get to the end of it. So I would actually suggest for your starting projects that they're small, they have got, you know, they're not too complicated and they're achievable so that you can actually start coming out with some finished pieces which is going to give you a huge sense of satisfaction and means that it's much, much more likely that you're going to keep on going. So the kind of projects that I would often suggest getting started with are something like a hat like this or a cow, a circular cow, which is kind of like a hat without the top part on it. So the things you're going to need to get started is once you've got everything together and you're ready to get started, to begin with, when you start off, you will begin with what's known as a cast on. And that means you're just gonna put your stitches on the needle. There is a million different types of cast on. Um, the ones that I pre uh, frequently see people starting with are long tail cast on, knitted cast on, or cable cast on. The long tail cast on is probably worth giving a shot because it's the most versatile and gives a very nice end result. So maybe give that a try. You can find all of those in my tutorial section on the website. You'll find all of the different types of cast-ons, but long tail cast-on I think is a good starting place. So when you've got the number of stitches you need for your project, the next thing you're gonna do is you're going to start working your knitting. There's two different kinds. This one is done in the round. So it means that when you've cast on your stitches, you join them around and then you just spiral up all the way up. If you're doing that, I'll take this project because of the fact, ignore the edging, I'll come back to that. But if you're just doing this part, this is stock net stitch. So it's smooth on the outside, which is all what's called knit stitch on the outside. And on the inside, it's all bumpy stitch, which is reverse stock net stitch. To do stock net stitch, this lovely smooth stitch, if you're working in the round, you just knit round and round and round until you get sick of it basically and that gives you a nice smooth outside and a rough bumpy inside if you are working flat like this project it's back and forth means that you're going to knit this side in one row turn around to the other side and on the back you'll be knitting what's called a purl stitch but it's going to give you this smooth fabric on the front of it so this is the public side or the right side this one is known as the wrong side of your work or the private side on the inside. 
The edge of this hat here as well is another way you can see both knit and purl. This one, remember, we're going round and round, so we're only ever on the outside, the right side or the public side of the work. These smooth ones are knit stitches. This is one column of knit stitch. This is another column. Then you come over here and these bumpy bits are purls. So there's one, two purl. So this is what's known as a two by two ribbing, which means there's two knit stitches and two purl stitches. So you just keep doing that all the way around. And you do that on the edge because it doesn't curl. So you want to put something on the edge that is going to hold the shape and isn't going to curl. So ribbing is good for that. Or what you see over here is what's called garter stitch, which it is kind of bumpy, bumping ridges on both sides. And this one is going to be, if you were on the round, it would be knit one round, purl one round. If you're doing it flat, it's knit this side, go to the other side and knit the other side. I know I'm probably blowing your brains now, too much information. But again, these are all down in the knit basics. Just kind of throwing all the words at you and trying to give you an overview of how the whole thing fits together. So once you've started with that, you've done your ribbing, then you just keep working up for your stock net stitch up to here. If you've got a cowl, the cowl is just going to finish up here and it's going to be straight and you end here. If it's a hat, you can see it's going to get smaller and you do that with what's known as decreases, which does what it says on the tin. It makes the stitches less, it decreases them. Lots of different ways to decrease again, but right now I'm just giving you the terms. You decrease to make them smaller till you finish at the top. This one, there's no decreasing. But now you've got all your knitting and you've got all those stitches sitting on your needle and you're going, okay, I gotta finish it off in some way. And the way to do that is with your bind off. At the top of this, you will bind off. In, in the UK, that would be known as cast off. Um, I find bind off easier to say because of the fact that we got a cast on and a bind off, that way they're nice and different. But you may come across it being said in another way. So you just bind off along the end here so that you finish it off and then you've got your finished piece. So I think either of those are really great places to get started. You can also obviously get a little bit more complicated with something like this. It's done in one piece from the top down. Opposite of this, these are your decreases. These are increases to make the piece bigger. So those, all of those little bits and pieces are the bones of what you would need to get started knitting. You'll have your cast on, your knit and your purl stitches, and then you will have perhaps some decreases, perhaps some increases, or maybe none at all, and then you'll finish it with a bind off, and that's going to give you a finished piece. So this, these ones are all, like the way I'm describing and talking about different cast-ons and different stitches, if you want the directions for that and you're trying to figure out how do I put all of this together, what you're gonna look for is a pattern. So you could look on my website, you may look somewhere like Ravelry, and you, if you start off with the yarn, you can search for yarn weights and then figure out the project you want to do. And it will tell you the gauge. So that means how many stitches, how many rows you're going to want in a particular square of knitting so that you know that the finished piece is going to be the size you want. It'll tell you how many stitches you need for your particular size. So if you want to do the small size, it'll say you have to cast on this number of stitches to make it this length and then do your bind off. So that's what the pattern is going to tell you. It'll tell you all of that information. How many stitches, what size the gauge is, whether there's increases or decreases, whether you're doing knit or purl, how long you're going to knit and how you're going to do your bind off. So that's all of that information is going to be in a pattern. If a pattern seems a little too intimidating, I would just encourage you to get yarn and if you've got a friend that knits, get them to get you started. Maybe to cast on initially and then give you the knitting and just practice the knitting. Because while the theory makes sense, and you might say, oh, I totally know what knitting is, your head and your brain are, are, are your, I should say your head and your body are not always totally connected. A bit like driving. You know when you're learning to drive and you know the theory, you know what you're supposed to do, but when you go into a car, and especially if you've got a stick shift, trying to remember the accelerator, the clutch, changing the gear, and your brain has to process every one of those steps as you're learning. And that means that it's really tiring to knit and it doesn't feel very, uh, to, to drive and it doesn't feel very intuitive. But all it takes is several months or maybe several years in some cases 
of practice, practice, practice. And what starts happening is those maneuvers become muscle memory. And when they become muscle memory, at that point, you can start building on the, on, on the actual, the, the mechanics, and you can start doing, getting into the nuances. You can start worrying about, am I going to hold my yarn in my right or my left hand? How do I tension it to make sure I get a nice even tension? All of those things that can come afterwards. What you want to get to the point of is having done enough stitches that your hands know what they're doing and you no longer have to think about it as consciously. And then you can really start taking off with your knitting. But if you do want help getting started, go, a knitting friend is great. If you've got a local yarn shop that you can drop into and either ask for some help getting started or perhaps ideas for beginner yarns and patterns, should be enough to get you on the journey. And then once you reach that point and you want to learn a bit more, keep dipping into my, my vlog here for videos on modifications. Come into the actual website to find all the tutorials and you know, more detailed knit basics as well. Um, I really do hope you enjoy your knitting journey because I love knitting and I love it more every year because there's always something new to learn. You never know it all. And if anyone says they know it all, then the likelihood is they're lying <laughs> because there's always something new to learn. So enjoy the process and enjoy learning to knit. Mm -hmm.